What's up, everybody? 100 Huntley Street is here at the Toronto Argonauts Training Camp 2024 edition, Alumni Stadium, University of Guelph, home of the Griffins. Oh, well, I'm so excited to be here with you, Herbie. Thank you for hosting us. What an exciting day behind. We can see the players, we see coaches, we see leaders. Herbie, I am so thrilled about our program today. It's gonna to be incredible. Laura, I'm excited that Huntley Street has chosen to be here today and we are going to meet some players. We're going to talk to some people more in depth about their faith journey, all as we get ready for the CFL season that is so exciting. Well, there is so much inspiration to come today and it all starts right now. The Toronto Argonauts are the oldest team in the Canadian Football League. With 18 Grey Cup championship wins, the team has a reputation for more than just winning. They are deeply involved in the community and in developing players beyond the field. Herbie Kuhn is the chaplain for the Toronto Argonauts. He invited 100 Huntley Street to a practice to see how God is working in the lives of some of these professional athletes. The Toronto Argonauts are practicing behind us in the field. Herbie, you know what it takes for these players to come out here and train physically and work yes. so hard. Yes. But there's something you do as chaplain of the Toronto Argonauts and you train these players spiritually. Yes. Tell us a little bit more about what you're doing. A chaplaincy role is really quite multi-dimensional, Lara. We obviously focus on the faith element. That's, that's the chaplain's representation, the faith element, talking about the Lord, talking about Christ and bringing that into the day-to-day -day mix of the life of a professional athlete. So encouraging them, educating them, teaching them, leading Bible studies, leading chapels, that kind of thing, all the things that we are, we have the blessing of being able to do with these athletes. And it's an incredible privilege, but it's not only that. Just as equal of a part of the ministry as the formal gatherings are the one-on-one -on -one elements, the conversations off to the side, the encouraging the people through difficult and challenging times in their lives, praying with people when they're going through really crummy situations and celebrating with them when they're going through really great circumstances, right? All of that is part and parcel of being a pro sports chaplain. And in case you couldn't tell, yeah. I really enjoy my job. <laughs> You do love it. And Herbie, it's amazing to watch you here on the sidelines even, you know, prior to filming this interview, you were standing there and you're naming the athletes that are making the plays. You're saying they're doing this. Oh, you're cheering for them. Your heart is so invested with each one of them. Yeah. And it's really like a ministry of presence, but that presence of Jesus being like Jesus to people in their challenging seasons, in their victories, in their struggles. You know something, Laura, we're ambassadors, right? Yeah. In the same way, if we're a Canadian citizen and we go and travel abroad, we want to represent our country well. As ambassadors for Christ, as the Apostle Paul would say, I'm an ambassador for him here in this mission field yeah. that is professional sports. And so I want to bring the energy that Christ brings and building relationships and most importantly, earning trust. Yeah. earning trust, building a rapport with players, regardless of whether they darken the threshold of a single Bible study or a single chapel over the course of the season, is engaged in building those relationships so that when life does happen, and we all know it does, yeah. the relationships are there and it's not a complete stranger that they're approaching. And I simply love the opportunity to be here day in and day out and hey, what's up? How's it going? When's the baby due? All those, how's the injury recovery come along? Did you get the imaging? All those kind of conversations. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. I love Jesus and I love sports. What a cool combo. It's so cool, Herbie, and it's so cool to see you in action. There is a big connection between professional athletes um, putting their identity in their sport versus possibly, we hope, God, but maybe yes. family or other parts of their lives. Talk to us a bit about the role faith can play in keeping the identity of an athlete strong no matter what they face. The Apostle Paul says in Acts 17, in him we live and move and have our being. No God, no us. No God, no talents, no abilities, no place or stage to practice those abilities and put them into practice. So you nailed it on the head with the word identity. As a chaplain, I feel part of our role as chaplains 
is to reinforce to these young men that their identity, if it lies solely in their abilities or their position on the team, mm. that is a fragile foundation. Yes. And it can crumble to the ground, whether it's a, a numbers thing, whether it's a salary cap thing, whether it's an injury thing, whether it's a whatever thing, the foundation needs to be the Lord. It needs to be something strong that is immovable. Mm. And that's what God brings into the mix. And you know what, later in today's program, I hope we have a moment together where we can pray. Yes. Okay, Herbie, we're so glad you're yes. speaking with us right now. Yeah. We're so thankful for all you do for these players. It means so much to them and their families. And at the end of the day, Lara, the most important thing is the gospel. Yes. Having the opportunity to share what Christ has done for, for you and me, and has done for them and pray that they will realize that personally. That message will be reaffirmed numerous times. I can promise you. Amen. Amen. Joining me now is hometown hero Daniel Adebaboye. He's a running back for the Toronto Argonauts. And recently he was with us on 100 Huntley Street. But here we are in the training area, on the field, and we're doing a catch up. Oh, Daniel, we're so glad to see you today. Yeah, I'm glad that you guys made the trip out. I really appreciate uh, the support. Well, thank you for having us. And, you know, Daniel, we saw you out there catching some passes and, and playing and putting your heart into what you do, as you always do. And um, your goal is to share, a, share the light of Jesus with them. What does that look like in your day in and day out with them on the team and on the field and off the field? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, our, our first meeting that we had as a whole team, we had it in, audit, in an auditorium. And essentially what happened was everyone stood up, they said where they're from, and they said something that they're interested in. And when I stood up, I said, if anyone, I love God, if anyone ever wants to talk about God, come to me, talk about Jesus. Um, you have someone to come talk to. And uh, I was hoping that that would set the stage for people to come talk to me. And um, by the grace of God, I've had teammates, I've had people who are believers and non-believers ask me questions about God saying, you know, I'm gonna give God a try this time, or I'm gonna, um, I just wanna know a little more about God. So um, that's, that's what it is every single day. You never know what, what conversation you're gonna find yourself in. You don't know who you're gonna to talk to. Um, and we kind of just rely on God and hope that God will use us as a vessel for his will. Um, and even with that, you know, we try to uh, share the truth with joy and all happiness. Um, Cause people can really read you and see, oh, is this person moving with joy? What is different about this person? And when they see that light shining, then um, it's contagious and they, they just wanna know what it's about. And you know, we say it's Jesus, right? So. Yeah, well it is contagious. And I think we all see the light of Christ in you, Daniel. And it's very inspiring. Um, you know, in 2022, uh, your team, the Argonauts won the Grey Cup and that was the 109th Grey Cup. So exciting. You were a big part of that yeah. win. And so that's a huge victory and, and something that I know meant so much to you. Um, at the end of last season, you sustained a pretty difficult injury. And it's not even something that you've spoken loudly about in some ways, but you've been so resilient and strong. Tell us a bit more about the injury and what the journey's been like towards recovery, how God has played a role in that. Yeah, um, it was definitely a, it was a tough moment in my life because, you know, the year prior to that, we just had a championship um, and, you know, dreams are starting to come true. And I'm like, wow, like, you know, God is really moving and working in different ways. And then, um, you know, the next year I start to get more opportunities to play. And the game prior to me getting hurt, um, I actually had the best game of my career. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of talk about, oh, who is this guy? What can he do and all these different things? And um, some of that could kind of go to people's heads. Um, but at the end of the day, like that wasn't where I was receiving my joy from. Right. And then the next week um, I end up playing in that game as well. And then I have the worst injury of my career. Um, and right there, I'm just like, wow, God, like I thought this is the moment when you were going to start to lift me up so that I can start giving you glory in front of people and people are going to start recognizing you. And, and in that moment, God was just like, it's, it's not time yet. And from the moment that I got hurt, I had, I wasn't sad at all. I wasn't mad. I wasn't blaming anyone. I wasn't mad at the guy that got me hurt. Um, and people were telling me, you know, you can be hard on yourself. You can be sad about what happened. You can cry. You can, you know, um, spend some more time thinking about it. But right there and then I, I had peace about it. I didn't want to cry. I didn't feel bad. I had joy. My joy in that moment, I felt like God was really testing my heart and saying, where is your heart? Is it with the things that I'm giving you or is it with me? And in that moment, 
Jesus Christ was my true joy and I could not, nothing could be taken away from me in that time. Um, cause that was the joy right there. And that, um, it was a time in my life that I've never been in before where I had two months, I couldn't walk for two months, two and a half months. Um, and it was a time where I could just spend in the word. I didn't have to work. I didn't have to do anything. I couldn't even drive cause it was my right foot. Um, I'm spending in the word, I'm in prayer. And it was a time to just be built up with the Lord and to really go to the Lord and, you know, um, continue to gain that strength because um, we were talking about this earlier you know I can boast in my weakness so the power of Christ can rest upon me and you know that's that's what I did in that time and um, by the grace of God um, I was able to make it in time for the for the beginning of the season healthy and strong um, and you know that's just so God can be glorified in that moment and I thank God for that whole experience. Well, amen. We were talking about that, how God's strength is made perfect in our weakness and the difference that makes. You recently got to speak to a lot of kids, actually, and you were asked about your injury. Yeah. And uh, you were doing an anti-bullying program that the Argonauts do in, out in the community. Mm -hmm. And you got to share about the role of God in your life as you've recovered from this injury, the strength he's given you. And we know that, you know, as we study the word, we study the principles of who God is and what he's called us to be in this world. We have more resilience and strength and, you know, we share his light with others. Somebody right now that I can see behind you, but don't turn around is uh, Michael Pinball Clemens. And this is the general manager here at the Toronto Argonauts. He is a bright light uh, to all of you athletes and to so many people across the nation uh, as a man who's a well-known athlete, a seven-time Grey Cup champion, <laughs> oh, wow, but also an incredible man of faith. What does Mike Pinball Clemens mean to you? Yeah, he means the world to me because um, he obviously had a decision in me coming to this team, and I'm forever grateful for that. And even in my first year when I wasn't playing as much, he was always coming up to me and giving me encouragement, saying, don't worry, it's not your time, but your time's going to come. Keep working. We see what you're doing. Um, and he, he doesn't just do that with me. He does that with everyone. Wherever he goes, he's a light. People smile. People are just like, wow, it's been Paul Clemens. Like, that is who he is. You, he is the, he's going to be the first one to tell you that, the energy that he brings, the presence that he brings, the happiness that he brings, his joy, it's not from him, it's from Christ. He knows exactly who he is in Christ. He knows exactly who his God is. And he brings that light to the community. There are so many people that know him because of that light of Christ that shines through him. Yes. Um, he's such an encouragement to all of us. Well, as, as are you, Daniel, and we're so thrilled that we got to speak with you today. We're gonna be rooting and praying for the Argos and we're gonna be cheering you on this season. Thank you so much. The Toronto Argonauts have a legacy of giving back to the community. It's a culture fostered by their general manager, Michael Pinball Clemens. The team's Huddle Up Bullying Prevention Program started in 2001. Players, coaches and pinball visit schools and have real conversations about their own experiences with bullying while encouraging students to be a positive influence in their school community. Players like Daniel Adababoye and Falarin Oromalade say this opportunity to give back is what they love about being part of the Toronto Argonauts. Where does our strength come from? The Bible puts it simply. Our strength comes from God. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. If you feel that your strength is lacking today, remember that you are human. You can lean on God, the strongest of them all. Great Cup winner and defensive lineman Falarin Armalade is a division all-star playing in his second season with the Toronto Argonauts. He joins me now to talk faith and football. Welcome to 100 Huntley Street, Falarin. Thank you, glad to be here. 
Well, we're so thrilled you're speaking with us. And here we are on the field where you were just training earlier today. Tell us a bit about uh, your upbringing. You were born in Washington, D.C. Yes. And uh, you were raised in a family of faith. Yeah. So growing up, did you go to church? Was uh, Were you... Um, really thriving in your relationship with God or what, what was that like? Um, for me, I think, um, well, so yeah, my parents we, brought me up in the Christian faith and I think it's one of the best things that they could have done for me. Um, I went to church sometimes more than more than once um, in a week. Um, but I think, I think I was, I, I didn't, the faith wasn't mine. Um, I followed them and I, you know, tried to, emulate, you know, the good parenting that they, they gave me. Um, but like I said, the faith wasn't mine. It was just something that I was, you know, following along with and kind of like a routine for me. Yeah. You know. And, and so you're growing up, you've got a, a lovely family life and they are instilling faith values into your life, but you're not living that out yet. Um, and you go into high school and you start to play some football. Yeah. And you kind of come into this sport late. Yeah. Tell us about that journey. Yeah, so I was a basketball player uh, before. I didn't grow to be as tall as the other professional uh, basketball players, but I just happened to have my my high school coach, my high school basketball coach. His brother was the football coach. So I, that's how I know is God ordained it to, to be this way because um, I was playing basketball at that time, never played like organized football in the neighborhood every once in a while, but first time playing organized football. It was like the way you play basketball is really um, explosive. So quick first step can get to the get to the basket, um, jump high and stuff like that. Physical. So I was like, yeah, you should try football. So I tried it and um, it seems to be going well, well for me. <laughs> <laughs> Quite well. Uh, so many good highlights there to that career. You you got chosen to go uh, and be part of the LA Rams. Correct. Yeah. And and so here you are, like your this dream's coming true. You're going into the um, the football league, and it's so exciting. But yet you have a bit of a curveball thrown at you. Tell us about that that experience and that yeah. time in your life. I was a free agent signing, like undrafted. As soon as the draft ended, you know, they called my agent. We got a deal together, and I ended up going to LA. So once that happens, you know, everyone's your biggest fan. I wasn't even there that long, and, and then, so I went there, got cut by them. Okay. Like usually they book a, book you one of the, the closest flights out, and you they ship you out of there, and and I ended up missing my flight, oh. so I ended up literally sleeping on the ground in that airport that whole that whole um, night or whatever. Yeah. Crying is like, man, like, I'm at the point where I've worked as hard as I could and done as much as I felt that I could, and it wasn't enough to meet that standard. Um, <clears throat> and I remember when my mom, my mom actually picked me up from the airport. It would only be the Spirit of God that it just, like, at the time I wasn't listening to a bunch of, like, gospel music or things like that. But there was a song uh, by Kirk Franklin, something by the name of Jesus. And I just wanted to play that song. And I played it. And at that time, you know, I, I could hear God saying, you're, like, you're mine. Like, you know. And at that point, you know, because I, I thank God that I've been in, in the church. So I at least heard God, you know, has you know is in control of it all like he's it's um that he sent his son Jesus to die die for us and and for for me once I heard that I knew like this can only be God calling me to him and I believe that he calls everyone that believes in him he calls them to be unto him and I feel like that was the first time where I was like I answered the call when I think in that season when you experienced getting cut from the Rams um and then suddenly you're awakened to this connection to God and yeah. this need for Jesus. It almost reminds me of the story of Joseph in the Bible. You know, there he is, he really in a prison at some point. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, what is happening? Why these ups and downs are going on. But you really learned about um, living for an audience of one at that point. Yeah. Because as an athlete, talk to us a bit about the pressure you feel to perform publicly, how that can become your identity and the difference it's made finding your identity in Christ. Yeah, for me, uh, it's been the the biggest difference, I feel like the audience of one when you're playing for God is like, did I 
that I try to play to God to the, to the best of my ability to honor God. Yeah. And if you know that you, you, you play in a way that honor God, you can, you can rest with it. And I think that's um, been the easiest thing. So like now, you know, I'm one of the, I'm one of the better, better players in the league. But, and with that comes more pressure, you know, oh, how am I going to maintain it? How am I, you know, especially, you know, oh, what if I get injured? What I, I, don't, I don't really worry about, yeah. about that anymore because I know, like, like I'm secure. Like, yeah. not only am I, am I secure, whatever happens, you know, is working together for my good, for my good, so. Yeah, Romans 8, 28. You know it, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm Oh, <laughs> and it's interesting too, because, you know, soon after that big heartbreak and then that renewed connection and decision to follow Jesus, Canada came in and we just scooped you yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> We got you out to the Calgary Stampeders. Yeah. And in that first year, you guys won the Grey Cup. Yeah. So <laughs> incredible, um, you know, success in sports. And yet, um, you still understand that your value is in God's understanding of who you are and yeah. definition of who you are. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you've had a journey through lots of different um, challenges, even up to this point now, here you are with the Argonauts, but you had a really significant injury. Yeah. And you had to come to this place wh where, you know, there's questions being asked internally probably. Can I keep playing? Is this a career-ending injury? Talk to us about the injury and what that is like for you as an athlete to go yeah. through something so serious. Yeah, so um, right after, you know, you win the Grey Cup, you're on a high, and then during preseason, the first preseason game, I blow my uh, quad tendon. So mm -hmm. that's <laughs> I ended up here, that's it? Yeah, yeah, so it connects, is the tendon that connects the knee. So, um, so basically I went from, you know, being, I guess, what we'll call it, some people call it a dynamic athlete to literally learning how to lift my leg up to, um, you know, having to connect stem to my quads to hopefully get the nerves to fire again. It made, it made me rely on God for my, um, for my, for like, for joy, because um, when you're injured like that, you don't, I wouldn't say the coaches forget about you, but you're not in meetings. No. You're just doing rehab, physical therapy. I did have some good coaches that actually did care though, which was great, but you're, at the time it was my right leg, so I couldn't even drive, because I couldn't bend my knee for at least four months. So I couldn't drive, you know, all the things that you like to do, you, I literally couldn't, yeah. couldn't do so. It was probably the time where I spent the most time yeah. um, with God, which was probably the best thing uh, yeah. for me by the time I didn't know it was, right? It reminds me of what Paul says in the Bible, that suffering produces character. And as I listen to you, I hear yeah. so much character. And you've been through such significant challenges, um, but physically and even just in terms of your morale because of the ups and downs with the sport. Yeah. Um, it's amazing, though, actually, in the last season here at the Argonauts, you were named an all-star. Yeah. And so we're cheering you on. <laughs> so you're, uh, you've really recovered, apparently. Yes, it's gone well. <laughs> yes, and you've made a really public declaration of your faith. Tell us about uh, the baptism that you yeah. recently had. Um, so I was said I was what I call dipped in water um, when I was in high school um, because I think according to the Bible, it's a it's a declaration of the faith that you that you have. So you don't do it just because you went to church or because, you know, uh, family, you know, you have pressure or external pressure to say, oh, this is something that, you know, you should do. This is what calls people Christians. No, you know, you're a Christian by, you know, believing that Jesus is Lord and confessing in your heart that, you know, God rose, or believing that God rose him from the dead, you know? And when you believe that, when you're, you're baptized, that's the declaration you're making that, Yes, this you know, resurrection of of Jesus, you know, who was who called himself Lord, and you believe that, you know, that yeah, I, you're agreeing with what he's saying. I saw your post on social media about your baptism, and it was so moving to read what you wrote. Yeah. I know how happy and and joy filled you are to be here playing with the Argonauts. It's an incredible team, yeah. and the organization MLSE is an amazing organization. Sure. You are um, playing with guys like Daniel Edebaboye, yeah. an incredible player too, and man of faith. And, you know, of course, your general manager is Michael Pinball Clemens, who is a man of faith, an incredible athlete. You've got Herbie Kuhn as your chaplain. Yeah. You're surrounded by so many inspiring men, and you were one of those inspiring men. 
and as you know, our viewers are watching right now, say there's a young person who is playing in sport yeah. or getting into sports and they need to um, have a word of encouragement about direction and focus yeah. as they enter into that, what would you say to them? Being able to get on track and remember like, these are the main, these are the main things, you know, you know, if it's even like, you know, reading the Bible every morning, like these are the main, the main yeah. things, like always focus on the, the main things that help you grow, whatever it may be, especially as an athlete. If you focus on the main things, you do the, what they call the little things over and over and over again, it produces big results. Valerian, that's so inspiring. And you know, those disciplines that we're showing in life and sport are also those disciplines in our spiritual life. And there's so much wisdom in what you just said. Yeah. Valerian, thank you so much for who you are and for the bright light that you are and for being with us today, sharing your heart and inspiring so many of our viewers. Amen, it's my pleasure. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at 100 Huntley. Well, what a day we have had here together, Herbie. This has been incredible. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us here at the University of Guelph to bring Huntley Street to Argos Training Camp. It's been fantastic. Well, Herbie, thank you so much for hosting us here. We're so thrilled. Everyone has uh, been such an inspiration to talk to. And, you know, you really see this glimpse and this heart of these athletes, you know, and it's so inspiring. And it makes me think about all the athletes across Canada. You know, we've got so many viewers watching nationally who are parents and grandparents whose kids are athletes, their grandkids are athletes, and even those who are athletes themselves. And Herbie, as someone who is fostering and encouraging the spiritual life of athletes uh, in such a significant way, would you pray for our athletes across Canada right now? Absolutely, it would be my honor too. Father God, thank you so much for your goodness and your faithfulness in our lives. You are good and you're worthy of our praise. And Lord, you've created every individual, every person with unique gifts, talents, skills, and abilities. And some are athletically inclined. Some have been given sports abilities to be able to participate and uh, exercise their bodies and their minds in an athletic platform. And we're so grateful. I want to pray for every young person, every middle-aged person, every old person across this country who loves to participate in sports, that you would protect them, guard them. If they're injured, bring them back from their injury in an expedient manner, Lord God, for your glory. And I pray most of all that they would realize that you are the author of the gifts. You are the author, uh, the one who makes it possible for them to do the things that they do. And Lord, that, that you would be acknowledged above all. So when things are going well or things are challenging, they would know to look to you. So Father, thank you so much. Thank you for the gift of sports. And it's an honor to be able to, to live in this sphere. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, Herbie, what a great moment together. What an incredible day and such a prayer. Thank you so much. Laura, thank you so much. Huntley Street family, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace. Thank you for your ongoing support of Crossroads, a supporter-funded nonprofit organization and member of the Canadian Centre for Christian Charities. Thanks to faithful people like you, we are able to continue producing 100 Huntley Street. You can write to Crossroads, P.O. Box 5100, Burlington, Ontario, L7R4M2, or visit crossroads.ca to learn more about our programs. With the world around us feeling unstable and unpredictable, the Bible offers timeless wisdom. Philippians 1.27 says, Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. This month, we want to help you navigate each day with confidence and joy. We're pleased to offer the book, Whatever Happens, How to Stand Firm in Your Faith When the World is Falling Apart, by acclaimed author Robert J. Morgan. This book takes you on a journey through the book of Philippians, the Bible's ultimate guide to living an undaunted life. Even when we fall apart or things fall apart around us, God is still working in and through those things in ways that when we look back and see it, amaze us. Request this ministry offer with a donation of $55 or more, or when you become a new monthly partner, call 1-800-663-2425.
265-3100 or visit crossroads.ca forward slash happens.